Hi, I'm Charlton Coates. Thank you for this opportunity. Today we'll be talking about a wonderful business opportunity called Don de la Terre. As you can see my name, I'm currently serving in the United States Air Force and plan to retire in the Air Force and eligible for retirement in the year 2030. It may seem like a long ways away, but it's never too early to start planning for your future. Before you know it, 2030 will be upon us. I've always been, it's always been my dream to retire in Orchard, but looking at the property and looking at the situation, I think Don de la Terre will provide my dream come true and an ample business opportunity for me to be quite successful. The opportunity. Forbes recently named Boise as one of the second best places in America to live. USA Today recently named Boise Idaho as the best city to move to in 2015. Boise is one of the fastest growing cities in the United States of America. Now as one of the fastest growing cities in America, there are countless hotels, churches, restaurants, and many other venues to be named. There are even resort type destinations outside of Boise, but they're all very expensive and they're all nothing like Dome de la Terre can be. Our solution. At Dome de la Terre, we strive and we've got a plan to create a unique, beautiful atmosphere that provides all natural cuisine, world class customer service, and an unforgettable experience unparalleled by any other venue in the area. To go over that, we'll go through some of these things. The property. These are actual pictures of the property in Boise, Idaho. It's actually in a little place called Wild. 45 minutes outside of Boise, in the country, nestled in the Treasure Valley, right in the heart of the orchard and agricultural hub of the Boise area. This is the Snake River, and you can tell the Treasure Valley here, you can see some of the orchards and some of the other farms in the distance. Now the barn does not exist yet. We're going to plan to build the barn, but this is kind of the vision that we have for the barn. Rustic, beautiful, expansive, natural. The atmosphere. This is the atmosphere we're starting to create. You can see in the orchard, on the Snake River, beautiful scenic vistas in the background. The restaurant. Now the restaurant will be all natural. It will support, it will be a support type for every venue and the arrangement for all local products to be served and will accommodate all diet types. Again, a little gimmick. Pick your own fruit. You'll see the orchard. It will take place in the orchard. The business model. Now you can see we have the venue, we have the bar, we have the restaurant. Now, a caveat about the restaurant, the restaurant is not going to be open full time. We just don't think there will be enough volume and the location is not ideal for a restaurant. It, it has to, so anyways, we think the restaurant is going to be pretty much only to serve the venue. But same thing with the orchard. The orchard will lack the size and be a very profitable orchard, but it will contribute to the venue. So if you contribute with the venue and you have the orchard and you have the restaurant, all three will be greater than they ever could be by themselves. Synergy is what we call that. We sell experience. We take a stress out of finding an event and make it a one experience of a lifetime. And that's what Don De La Terre will do. So we talk about an off-peak, and on-peak we'll talk about that a little bit later. Market demand. Looking out, the average cost of American wedding right now is over $11,000. The average cost of a quinceanera is over $5,000. And nearly all Americans have attended or will attend an event at least once a year. So you look at these numbers, and there's always going to be a market. I just use quinceanera as an example for a once-in-a-lifetime event. If a quinceanera costs 5000 other types of events probably cost about the same. But again, in the Western U.S., the average American spends $55,000 a year on entertainment. That's incredible. That's an average. But there's always going to be weddings, there's always going to be celebrations, and there's always going to be a need for Americans to meet and get together, especially in Boise. Competition. As I mentioned earlier, there's other venues out there. There's other restaurants, there's churches, there's, uh, there's golf courses, there's resort-type venues. There's even wineries and vineyards nearby Don de la Terre. But none of them are going to be able to compete with what Don de la Terre is going to provide. Sales approach. The top market segments. Weddings, family reunions, business retreats, large group events. Those are going to be our main segments just because they're more profitable. The smaller, more intimate group events, yeah, we'll still host those and we'll still have those. But again, our focus is mostly going to be on a larger event because we're going to charge more per person and they're going to be accessible to more of our larger, more uh, uh, attractive options. So the larger the event, like we talked about, typically translates to a larger profit. However, once-in-a-lifetime events, like a quinceanera, can be very profitable as well. Just because they're once-in-a-lifetime, people are more willing to spend on that type of an event. Sales forecast. Looking at the numbers, we expect that we need at least four events a month to break even, to remain profitable. Anything above four, the profit margin soars. So eight events a month during peak months will achieve and surpass our financial goals. That's what we're shooting for. Uh, when compared to large group events, as you can see, and it's critical for us to develop into a premier venue destination. 
so that we become and develop this reputation as one of the premier destinations in business world today. Continues. From the bottom up, we're looking at a couple of these scenarios. So, looking at the most basic pass package, about fifteen hundred dollars a day. So, for a small group event, lowest package is going to be for thirty people, fifteen hundred dollars plus about thirteen dollars a person for food equals about two thousand events. This is what we're hoping for: the large group events. We're looking for about thirty-five hundred dollars for the venue, fifteen hundred dollars for food, and then some for other fees and taxes. So, about fifty-four hundred dollars for an event. Again, if we get that four times a month. We're in the green. Eight times a month, we're sore. Management team. I myself will be the CEO. My wife, who has a, a lot of experience in the day to day operation of uh, hosting events and wedding planning, will be our director of event operations. Orchard foreman, and then a chef and a restaurant manager, both to be determined. Operations. I'll run all the business operations, and again, we'll break this into three separate entities. The event venue will be ran by my wife, Melissa, the orchard, the orchard foreman, the restaurant by the chef. So fruit and vegetables will be produced on site. Other food will be procured locally, again, responsible for the chef. And then capital will be mostly procured by my own means. And again, we'll talk about a one partnership that could exist here in a little bit. Development milestones. You can see that. April 2030 That's what we're going for. Financial projections. Uh, in the handout that I'm going to provide you, you can get into the more minute details with the financial projections. But the big thing to look at here is 30000 40000 50,000, 60,000, we will be profitable. And that is our net income gain, all right? That's what we're looking for at Green. And that's with all of our expenses and all of our costs being very conservative. Funding. Don't do the tear is my retirement plan. It's, what I, it's my dream, it's where I want to live, it's what I want to do. So there will be no additional partners or investment or funding. The only possibility that I kind of alluded to would be that currently the property right now is an orchard. I just rented out to a nearby orchard, and they, they they work as an orchard. In fact, it was actually purchased from them, and then with the you know they pay they pay a yearly a yearly fee to rent that land with a lease. They have a five year lease right now, but I could see a situation where we could develop some into some kind of partnership where they could continue to operate that property as part of an orchard, which would save me hiring an orchard foreman, and then we could come to some kind of agreement where I could use as much fruit for the venue as as I need and create some kind of organization. So I don't have to buy equipment, I don't have to use the labor, I don't have to do any of that. They can, can take care of all that and I could just, again, reap the rewards of having their orchard on the venue. So as you can see, it's exclusively tied to my personal finances. I inherited the property. Uh, most of my investments now will be liquidated to commence building the barn. And then talking about finding a sell, take out a loan, my rental property, come up with the rest of the business loan. Exit strategy, the property is developed and it's laid out, my personal home will also be on this property. So it will be in one corner while the rest of the business will be in the other corner so that we could sell that property if we ever needed to and that would be our exit strategy. Um, if no one wanted it as a venue, it's a very diverse and very valuable piece of land. Uh, it's on Snake River, it's an orchard, so it's, like I said, it's right in the middle of the agricultural hub of the Boise area, so it could be used for all, a number of things. And again, the barn could be repurposed for anything that you wanted to be used it for. As for the current status, I own the property. It is currently an orchard. Uh, the layout is being developed. Uh, the venue and different things are being researched right now. And I'm in the process of working towards the military retirement, uh, which allows me a fallback plan if I need to. And it gives me the financial freedom to work at Don't Know the Terror to give my heart to it. Um, actively investing, saving for the barn construction even right now. The risk assessment, there's always going to be risk. But I think Don't Know the Terror is fairly safe. Uh, orchard, it's very risky. Uh, drought or a bad year could spell doom for any kind of small orchard, whereas the venue here would save the orchard in this situation. Uh, there are competitors that could copy that approach. Like I said, there's local vineyards and wineries in nearby that could see the success of Don't Do Terra trying to copy that approach. Weather, economy, uh, factors with a lot of different things. And again, there could be an accident that happens on an event, and Don't Do Terra could be liable. Again, we'll get into that a little bit more, but that could be a risk of something going forward. Uh, Don't Do Terra has the opportunity to be many things, but first and foremost, it will be a unique, beautiful atmosphere that provides all natural cuisine, world-class customer service, and exclusively creates a world-class, a premier destination and experience for its customers. We do that through the property, the bar, the atmosphere, and the restaurants. Overall, it's an experience unlike any other.